SPI Flash Programming is easy with Universal Scan. You don't need any net lists, any special test fixtures, any test executives, or anything else normally associated with traditional boundary scan test and programming operations. You just set up the Universal Scan Device Programmer, select a data file, and hit Program. That's all there is to it. For this example, we attached an SPI device to the Xilinx CPLD on the Universal Scan demo board. The board actually doesn't come with an SPI flash device, we just jumpered one in at header H14 on the board. The only thing we really want to know is how is the SPI device connected to that Xilinx. In this case, the output is connected to pin 38, the input is connected to pin 37, etc. It's this list right here that we need to enter into Universal Scan. To program an SPI flash device, we just set up Universal Scan in the usual manner. Let's load an existing scan file. This is the scan file for the demo board that ships with Universal Scan. It contains the three CPLDs all connected in a JTAG chain talking to the parallel port. Now we just select the Flash Programmer tool from the Tools menu, and it's bringing us up the Flash Programmer toolbar. The only button that's active is the Setup button, so we hit that. In the Setup dialog, you pick the data file that you want to program into the device, you select the device you want to program or edit and create your own custom device and you specify the pins that are connected to the signals on the flash device. For now we'll just load an existing configuration and hit OK. Once the programmer is configured click on the Utilities button. In this dialog you can manipulate and view various registers in the SPI device. This works out well because it tells us if we're actually talking to the device or not. For example, let's issue a read ID command. Universal Scan goes out, reads the data from the PROM, and compares it against the data that was specified in the device file. In this case, we see that the PROM, the hardware device, matches the specifications in the file, so we have a pretty good feel that we are actually talking to the device. Uh, if I want to, I can write to the status register. Let's dial in a 1C here, and sure enough, I see that the readback pulled up the exact same data. If I want to reset that, I can, and again the read pulled up the same thing. The point here is I can read the registers, I can write the registers, I can talk to this device, I feel very confident that things are hooked up correctly and everything's going to work. To program the device, we just hit the program button. Universal Scan then erases the entire device. You can turn that off if you want to. It then programs the device and then verifies the device. We can see here that the bulk erase took about six seconds, programming took another five seconds, and the verify operation took eight seconds. Now we just hit the view button to see what's inside the prom. Universal Scan sucks the data out of the prom and formats it for display, and then shows us a little view window so we can see what's in the prom. In this example, we're looking at address zero, and then sure enough, it put the little text file that I had prepared into the prompt for us. Now let's take the same data file, but this time program it into a different location in the prom. To do that, we punch the setup button, go to the options tab, where we can turn off the erase because we don't want to erase the data we just put in there, and let's also turn off the verify just to save us a little bit of time in the video, and let's specify a starting address of, oh, pick a number. How about 11123 hex? Hit OK. Hit Program. And sure enough, Universal Scan skips the erase operation. It programs that same data file, but this time at an overridden address location of 11111 hex. And we're done. Let's go take a look. We hit our View button. It retrieves the data out of the prom for the low memory address. We can see that our original data at address 0 is still here. But let's go see if the new data up at address 11111 is there now. Again, Universal Scan goes out and retrieves that data from the SPI device. And sure enough, that same copy of that same data is now up at this address offset. Now let's go get a different data file and put it at yet another address in the prom just to see how to do that. Again, we hit the Setup button. Uh, let's select a different data file. To select a new data file, we just hit the Browse button. 
and on the Universal Scan CD there's a folder full of S records, just little sample S records you can use to test the program with. Let's grab this 256 byte S record here. Same device, same connections. Under options, let's go ahead and put this one, well let's put him up at uh, 30,000 hex. Say OK. Hit program. Again, we're still skipping a race. We don't want to erase the previous data that was in the device. Universal Scan programs that data in, and we told it to skip the verify, so we're all set. Let's hit the view button. Again, Universal Scan sucks the data out of the prom, formats it for us, and throws it up on the screen. We can see that our U data here is still at address 0. But now, if we go up to address 30,000 hex, update the screen. Universal Scan pulls that data out of the prom and displays for us the data at 30,000 hex. And sure enough, our new data file is located at 30,000 hex. Let's go back to the 11123 address, see what's down there. Hopefully that little example text U is still there. And sure enough, it is. Now let's erase a couple sections of memory. To do that, we just hit the Erase button, select Erase Part of a Device. Uh, looks like I need to clean up a previous example here, so I'm going to delete these. Uh, and what we do now is we specify the address range that we want to erase. Let's erase everything between 0 and 3 FFF, like that. I say Add. Let's also erase that chunk that we programmed up at 30,000 hex. One, two, three. 30, 1, 2, 3. One more. Add. Universal Scan shows you how this device is organized. The device size is 100,000 hex bytes. Its page size is 100 hex bytes, or 256 bytes. Its sector size is 4,096 bytes. And its block size is 64K bytes. You can erase most devices by page, by sector, or by block. This particular device doesn't have a page erase command, but it does have a sector and a block erase. So what that means is if I hit this sector erase button, Universal Scan is going to start at this starting address of zero. It's going to erase the four 1000 hex byte sectors between zero and 4000 hex. It's then going to erase the single 1000 hex byte sector starting at 30,000 hex because I didn't specify a end address that was beyond the size of the sector size. So let's do that. Hit sector erase. It lists all the sectors it erased for us. Sure enough, it erased the four sectors in the low memory range and the one sector up at 30,000 hex. And it took about one second to do that. Let's go take a look at the damage. We hit the view button. Universal scan goes and retrieves the data from the prom. And sure enough, the low memory range has been erased. Let's go look at the 30,000 hex. We expect it to be erased also. Give Universal Scan a few seconds to pull that data out of the prom. Sure enough, this memory range has been erased. But what about that data that we put down at 11123 hex? Is it still there? Sure enough, there it is. And that's all there is to it. We just programmed this device several times, and we didn't need any net lists, any special test fixtures, any test executives, or anything else normally associated with traditional boundary scan test and programming operations. We also did a quick demo of the partial erase function. Using Universal Scan to program SPI devices couldn't be easier. You just set up Universal Scan in the usual manner, set up the flash programmer and hit program. That's all there is to it. Download the free trial and give it a try today.